Let's take a look at what I think is Poundland's biggest light. It's their solar-powered stake light with two LEDs. Ooh. And the pricing is £5, six euros, and all these different currencies. This shows you the scope of Poundland, or deals as it's sometimes called. Bright white. Boo. We can change that. Let's open it up. So if I take it out the packaging we have... Lots of instructions in there, as usual. A suitable stake and a spike for mounting. Oh, that's quite thick plastic. And the base. Now, uh, I'll show you this lit up. That's a good idea. So I'll unscrew the cover, turn it on. Notice it has uh, little bits of silicon, uh, like the uh, polysilicon, polycrystalline silicon uh, solar cells. So I've turned it on. I shall now turn off the light and we can see what it looks like. So the light is going off, if I can find the switch, and it is ghastly white. But you know, we can do something about that, okay? Watch your eyes, the light is coming back. The light is back. Off comes the cover again. Now I have to say that this globe's nice. It's just that right diffusion that uh, it's designed to pass a lot of light in to the solar panels and also provide Diffusion without attenuating the light too much. This is so white. It's glaring out in the camera. But it's a nice globe. Just the base and the globe would be useful for other projects. I could think this would make a really nice night light just running at a very low current and just glowing ominously in your house. Or glowing delightfully, not necessarily ominously. Okay, let's zoom down and open this up. I'm going to guess it is based on the standard 4-pin chip. Just the usual stuff. And with the LEDs probably in parallel, because that's how they normally wire them in these multi-LED lights. And is it going to be a triple A? It's a triple A. 200 milliamp hour, so not super generous triple A, but triple A nonetheless. Let's pop that out. Oh, so light. As they are. Let's pop the circuit board out. And we'll see what it's got. So the... Polycrystalline silicon tends to be a bit more generous in terms of current output for a given... Well, I can test that. I shall test that for a given size. It's a classic 4-pin chip. It's got an inductor. Brown, green, brown. 150 microhenry. So it's not going for mega brightness, but it's going for an OK brightness. OK. Well, the LEDs... Oh, are they in parallel? Yes, they are in parallel. Boo. We could have wired them in series. It'll work with them in series. But let's swap these out. I shall choose a colour. Uh, what would suit that? Blue would suit that. Because it looks a bit like a, a moon. Or, actually, you know what? I shall use the ice blue LEDs because they look great. Hold on a second while I just get the stuff together and we can do this. One moment, please. The solder iron is up to temperature. I've also connected a cheapy meter onto the solar panel and stuffing it up against the light at the bench here. Oh, turning the meter on, which is terribly helpful. Yes, that does help. Mm -hmm. uh, turn the meter on. I can get it up to about 100 milliamps pressed up against the light. That's, I'm not sure how comparable that is to actual sunlight though. But it's good enough. It gives a rough indication. So here are the LEDs I've chosen to use. Let me show you the color here. These are ice blue LEDs. And if I plug it in here and turn it on, you'll see it's a very pale pastel blue. It's basically speaking a blue chip with this tiniest little hint of, blue phos of white phosphor on it just to give a nice pastel blue color. So the first thing I'm going to do is flow some fresh solder onto these existing LEDs. This is where I'm kind of tempted to, you know, I could wire these in differently. I could actually have reconfigured it so they're wired in series, because you can do that. A previous experiment showed that you can actually run these LEDs a fairly... Uh, you can run several LEDs in series in these chips. So I'm going to heat both the solder connections at once and pull that LED out. If it comes out, it's not one to come out, it's actually trapped for some reason. There it is. Is this actually marked with polarity? Yes, it is. It's got the flat there. Let me zoom down a bit. 
And now I'll go to the other side and grip the circuit board stoutly in my fingers. And then I shall flow these two solder joints. Did I put more flip solder in those? Probably not. Doesn't matter. It's fine. Yeah, the odd, odd shape of the circuit board makes this just that little bit harder. They're out. And now I've got some desoldering braid here, which I shall use to mop up the residual solder. Not my usual desoldering braid, not sure where that's gone. This is thinner stuff, but it's doing the job and that's all we really need. Desoldering braid works better if you've got a tiny little touch of liquid flux on it before you use it. It makes it more sucky, if you will. That's good. Now there are little uh, fiberglass, oh they're not fiberglass, there are little plastic spacers on these LEDs. So let's get the new LEDs and thread them through. The long lead is the positive connection, the short lead is the negative. Except for some red LEDs from China for some bizarre reason. So long lead is going to the positive side, short lead is going to the negative side. And this is where the circuit board is going to be just that little bit trickier to hold. Fortunately, because the legs are splayed, it is kind of holding in place. So I shall solder one of the leads, the positive one, as it happens. And I'll make sure that LED is standing up straight, which it is, and then I shall solder the negative lead. Job done. Then I'll upset the perfectionists by cutting the leads to length afterwards. Some people claim that stresses the solder joints. I'm not overly convinced about that. There is some military specification somewhere that says all leads must be cropped before being uh, soldered so you don't crop them afterwards. I don't care. Let's stuff this one in. Positive in there, negative in there. Maybe nudge it up a little bit because a little bit of height is good. And I shall solder the positive connection. And uh, make sure the LED is lined nicely. It is aligned nicely. And then I shall solder the negative connection. Lovely. Job done. That wasn't too hard. The other colour might be nice. It's warm white. So let's put this back down. The LEDs go through the housing like this. And there is a little housing for the switch here. Oh, and these wires have decided to get right in the way of the uh, screw hole. But that's okay. We'll get them out of the way. Hopefully none of them will pop off in the process. Is this going to work? No, they're just really pesky wires that are wanted to get in the way. They are getting in the way. I shall tuck them down that direction instead. It will go together. Fumblesome. The little switch, which we're going to probably bypass in the end anyway, because the switches are always problematic in these. They're only really there to keep the battery disconnected during shipping. Now, is this going to go into the correct position in the pillar? Yes, it is. In goes the battery. This gets folded over to hold the battery in position. Uh, let's test it. Let's turn it on. Oh, it is on. Cover these. The LEDs are lit up. Right, tell you what. Let's put it back into the housing then. Loads of space in here. That's nice. As always with these things, it's a good idea to cover everything with either Vaseline or grease or whatever and uh, just try and seal everything from moisture ingress. Because moisture kills solar lights, which is unfortunate given that they tend to be used outdoors. There's a little spacer here. Oh, and drain holes them on. There's spacer here to hold the battery in. It just snugs up against the battery there. So I shall manipulate that into the position it feels like it's in its little pillars. And then I shall pop the screws in. Looking forward to seeing how this looks. I do have a nice blue LED in a light outside. And I have to say it looks quite nice. It looks sort of brighter than just plain blue. It has also that nice pastely look to it. This screw. Is there a tap of new thread? Or I've just wedged a wire in underneath it. Or it might just be a randomly different screw. Okay, globe. Globe on. On the right thread. I think it's in the right thread. And then turn the light off. I'll zoom out for this. And we'll see how this looks. 
It's a ghostly blue colour. I'll just brighten that up. Oh, that's better. I should have done that, really, in the first place. See, you can see the two LEDs at the bottom. But that is a nice ghostly blue. It's actually quite nice. It's improved from the cold white and gone more in the direction of a, of a more vivid colour. Okie dokie. Watch your eyes. The light is coming back. So there we have it. Poundland's larger than usual solar stake light. This doesn't look like in the right thread, does it? I have noticed this uh, while screwing it on earlier on. It's very easy to get in the sort of wrong thread. And it, yeah, that's better. It's kind of better now. Uh, but uh, Poundland's larger than life globe light. It's actually a nice base for building your own projects. And uh, it's a very good sort of kit of parts, if you will, at a very affordable price. So there we have it. The newly modified Ice Blue Big Poundland Solar Globe.